Hey all, welcome to another mellow installment of Storytime Yoga. This session will be all for your low back. We'll also work with strength and support around our hip region and with our backside muscles. So all of this working towards letting your low back take a bit of a break and articulating uh, the pieces of spine in your low back so you have better mobility and generally better access to movement in that area. So I will ask you to grab a couple of props. You can grab a ball for rolling, that's obviously optional, so if you don't have it, no big deal. A tennis ball works. Uh, grab a strap or a TheraBand or a resistance band will work. You can double it up for what we're doing. Um, I have a yoga strap that self locks and you can adjust the loop. So you can pause the video and grab this stuff as well as a bolster or some rolled up blankets or a couch cushion will work. The story we get to look at today is hard for me pr to pronounce. <laughs> it's inspired by my friend Kelly Sunrose and the story is Here and Yak Shibu and um, honoring and respecting thresholds in our lives, gray areas perhaps in our lives, um, places where we might not always know a yes or no answer. So you can take your time to come on down onto your right side and you're welcome to either outstretch your bottom arm and rest your head on it or you can put your bolster or cushion underneath your head and have your bottom arm forwards if that's better for your shoulder. And then we'll draw our knees in a little pressing the inner part of your feet together, start to slowly lift your top knee and then slowly lower it and slowly lift and slowly lower. Now you might lower slow enough that you still feel the muscles of your outer hips, your outer glutes working on the descent of your knee. Another option is to float your feet and slowly lift and lower, which for me adds another component of work to the outer hip. Here I'm going to give some attention to my belly button still facing forwards and not rolling up towards the ceiling. And you might go for five, for four, for three, maybe with your breath. And try not to rush it for two moving slowly and for one. And when you rest in your fetal position there, you can take your hand to your top hip and circle it. So down and away from you, back behind you and forwards. And let that circle really move into your low back, bringing some ease and some flow into your low back. Nice, and then we'll go for our second one where we outstretch our top leg. Pick your heel up so you're slightly internally rotating your foot and then lift and lower. We'll do this about 10 times. I already feel a lot of the work going on there, especially when I lead with my heel and press my bottom leg down into the ground. So it's almost like I have a resistance band in between around my thighs and I'm trying to break it apart. So that's three. Again, try not to rush it. You can always rest. Four. These are feeling hard for me today. Five, but good hard. Pleasurably intense. Seven, eight, nine. See if you can keep the energy out of your upper body and work your lower body and 10. Ha, huh, release it out and do a little circle into your hip. Take a moment on your side, so. That name that's hard to pronounce, Hiranyakashipu, is a demon king. And in Hindu mythology, where the story comes from, demons are neither good or bad, although they can certainly do bad things. But um, they kind of rest in a gray area as well. And Hiranyakashipu, um, you can circle your hip again. Had a terrible occurrence happen. Vishnu, the god of preservation and sustainability had murdered his brother 
So take a moment there. And then our next one is to outstretch our leg. Again, internally rotate a little bit so you might already feel your outer hip muscles. And it's like a half moon leg, you know, half moon Ardha Chandrasana, lifting your leg and lowering and you don't need to come all the way down to the floor but line it up with your torso you might even feel your abdominal muscles working to keep you directly on your side we might do about 10 of these so that's already three and you can lift as high as you want again keeping your belly button facing forwards and try not to jack your top hip up towards your top armpit so i'm actually going to hold my outer rim of my hip there the top of my pelvic bowl and push it away from me so that I am putting less work into my side and more into my gluteal muscles and outer hip there. So maybe three more there, two and three. And then you can come back into your fetal curl and rock your hip. Take a moment to catch the residue of that. So here in Yakshipu was so upset that he was creating a great heat to his prayers. He wanted to be gifted immortality. So this was never happened to him. So he, his heat really reached the gods and Brahma, the God of creation, of birth, um, of creativity heard his prayers. So this last one here, you can roll onto um, your forearms, but stay in this position. So you can roll a bit and then take your top leg back behind you, extending, opening the front of your left hip. So it's a bit of a back bend. Just do that as much as feels safe and good. You can always come down onto your stacked hands or stay a little up and then internally rotate your back legs. So your big toe points down, your heel drives up. And you can do those 10 pulses with a little spiral and a little back bend and uh, opening to the front of your left hip. So again, slow motion. I know I kind of noticed the tendency in myself to rush these and I rush the descent of the leg. So see if you can lift and lower slowly so all of those outer hip muscles stay sort of online in the lowering. So we're not really using momentum. It's like we're, again, there's a resistance bend around your outer thighs and you're pressing into that. So about five more. Maybe your breath is slow and soft and lengthened exhales. And then you can come out of that one, maybe come back onto your bolster roll your hip give it a good roll and then in between the sides if you have a bolster cushion or set of blankets i'm going to ask you to take that and set it up underneath your feet in baddha konasana so of course you can take it underneath your knees and fully open up into like a shavasana relaxation or you can take your feet together on the height, your knees wide, and maybe even inch your low back away from your hips and feel a nice landed low back. And whatever you feel there in this externally rotated position, Supta Bodha Konasana. So Brahma heard the prayers and here in Yakashipu said, I want to be granted immortality. And Brahma said, oh, child, I cannot grant immortality to any humans because in Hindu mythology, demons were human. <laughs> and here in Yakashipu decided that he would use the sharpness of his intellect. He was quite a witty, intelligent demon king to outsmart the god and said, well, will you grant me three wishes then? So let's take a few breaths here. You might take your arms over your head, double diamond. See if one hip feels a little different than the other.
any differences in pain sensations, in smoothness of the tissue, in ease. And then we'll switch gears so that we come onto the other side. So you can roll over to the side, roll on up, and land on your left side, or the side that you didn't do. I'm gonna use the pillow of my bolster. And bring your inner feet together. And the first movement we did was to press both Press your bottom leg into the floor and press your inner feet together and then open and slow motion close up through the inner knees. All of these we'll do about 10 times. So again, focus on the deceleration of the lower so that you can feel the gluteal muscles and the outer hips working through the whole range. If you want a little bit more, you can float your feet. For me, this gives me a little more access to pushing my bottom leg into the floor and maybe a little more height out of my top knee. And try not to have your belly button roll towards the ceiling in this movement. Almost keep your belly button pointing down to the floor or at least straight forwards. Continue to slow it down. You might also be taking longer, smoother breaths. Maybe enjoying the pleasure of strength in this area, knowing that strong hip stabilizing muscles can support your low back. And then you can let it go and give a good circle to your hip one way and then the other. See if one hip is a little more willing to circle than the other. Feel it into your low back. And then our next movement is we'll take our top leg forwards, any amount, you can bring it higher or lower. Pick up your heel so you're slightly internally rotating the leg and then lift and slow lower, hover above the ground. Lift and you can press your bottom leg down as well. And notice which one of these feels the hardest for you. See which one you wanna rush through the most. If there's one of them that makes you wanna grip your jaw, this is the one for me. <laughs> and can you also keep your top hip away from you a little so that your side waist isn't cinching too much in the movement? Maybe for four more. Get curious about the work. Get curious about the differences between the two sides. One more. You can release that out and <laughs> circle through your hip. See if after the work your hip is more willing to circle, then you can rest in that. So with his first wish, Brahma said, sure, I'll give you three wishes. That sounds reasonable. And he said, all right, well, my first wish is that I can't be slain by man, animal, or God. And Brahma said, granted, my child. So the next one here, you can stretch out your top leg, turn your big toe down. It's like a long line from your head to your heel. And then it's a lift of the outer heel and a lower, like your half moon Ardha Chandrasana leg. And then notice if you're rushing one part of it. Are you rushing the upswing and kind of kicking up strong? Or are you rushing the lower? I tend to rush the lower. Can you cup the top of your hip and push it away from you? so that you're staying long through your outer side waist, you're really driving up through your outer heel, isolating your outer hip and your backside. Maybe for five more. You might work your breath into the movement, especially if it's feeling extra challenging. Only a few more. Let that go and give your hip a little circle one way and then the other. And then here in Yakashipu says a second wish. She says, well, let's say that I cannot be killed. I cannot be slain 
in darkness or daylight? And Brahma says, okay, deal. And then your last one here is to roll a little so that your forearms come to the ground and you can stack your hands and rest down. There's a little revolution through your spine, a little hip extension, your leg goes behind you. Internally rotate and then lift from there. So you've got 10, you can push your bottom left thigh into the ground at the same time as if there's a resistance band. And then I'm just again noticing I wanna rush, so really slow motion it like you're moving through honey. You have thick liquid surrounding you or something and there's some resistance to the movement. Your breaths, you can add to this by pushing your bottom leg into the ground, pushing your forearms into the ground, revolving your belly button towards the ground. And then if you're rushing the up tick, <laughs> slow it down. If you're rushing the lower, slow it down. And then roll back onto your side and give your hip a little circle. And his third wish, he says, well, then I cannot be killed inside or outside my house, in heaven or on earth. And I think he crammed a couple more things into that third wish, but he did it anyways. So I can't be slain inside my home or outside, on earth or in the heavens. And Brahma said, okay, reasonable, done deal. And take a breath in here take a breath out and then you can come back to your Supta Baddha Konasana or perhaps it's your knees on your prop. So feet on that, knees wide. You can grip the edges of your mat here, something I like to do, and then tuck tailbone and drag your ribs away. So you're really creating more length and smoothness into your lower back like you're ironing out the sheet of your low back. <laughs> And then if you want to double diamond, you can take your arms over and see if there's a little more symmetry through the two sides or what's happening with sensation, if there's less pain, if there's more ease. How's the holding patterns that might be there in your hips? How are they doing? Take a few breaths. So after he was granted all of these wishes, he th really thought he was unstoppable. And if there's a time in your life when you can remember if you feel like you're unstoppable, maybe you go a little too far. So <laughs> he <laughs> ends up really being a terror to his kingdom and becomes a tyrant because well, even the gods can't kill him. And his wife falls pregnant during this time, but she's terrified of his actions. And so a wise sage takes her into a safe space and she ends up praying to Vishnu, the very God that is here in Yakshibu's sworn enemy for safety and protection for her unborn son. So a few more breaths here. Okay, let's come on out of this and you can roll to the side and take your bolster to the side. This is the part where I'm gonna invite you to grab your strap.